You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. This place. It's a time. It must be late. Very late. Night in the salon. Let's black out down here. Who? Uh, forgive me, sir. Yes? Are you addressing me? Begging your pardon, but they'll be finished serving dinner soon. They? Uh, the galley crew, sir. Why do you tell me this? Well, I only meant... What? What did you mean? Well, all I mean to say is, you'd best go in now, sir, if you want your evening meal. My... my meal? Uh, the salon will be closing in a few more minutes. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. In the salon. Is that what you call it? Yes, sir. It's very dark out here. Would you like to follow me? Follow? The lights, you see. From now on, I'll have to switch them off when we open the door uh, to the deck. And then on again. You understand, sir? Because of the blackout. The blackout? Yes. This way, sir. Uh, are you all right? Why wouldn't I be? Is something wrong with my appearance? Why, no, sir. It's only that... Is this your first time? My what? Your first passage. It can take a bit of getting used to sea legs and all I'm that. I'm quite used to being at sea. Thank you. I was just... Yes, sir? Listening. To the engines? <laughs> Don't worry, sir. The diesels were checked thoroughly before we left port. And Captain Willoughby's top draw. He'll get us there safe and sound, you can be sure of that. No, no, not the engines. What then? I was listening to the water, the cold ocean water out there, and the night. This is the deck of a small freighter, the SS Queen of Glasgow, located somewhere in the North Atlantic. Her registry, British. Gross tonnage, 5,000. Age, indeterminate. At this moment, she is one day out of Liverpool. Her destination, New York. Duly recorded in this ship's log is the sailing time, course to destination, weather conditions, temperature, longitude, and latitude. But what is never recorded in such a log is the fear that washes over a deck like fog and ocean spray. Fear like the throbbing strokes of pistons from the engine's diesels, each one a heartbeat, parceling out every hour into breathless minutes of watching, waiting, and dreading. For the year is 1942, and this particular ship has lost her convoy. Now she must travel alone like an aged, blind thing groping through the unfriendly dark, stalked by the unseen periscopes of steel killers enemy U-boats that also watch and wait. The Queen of Glasgow is therefore a frightened ship, and she carries with her a premonition of death. In a moment, her crew and passengers will find out just how real that premonition may be. When a course is set that leads them all into an area known as the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Judgment Night, starring Chelsea Ross, with Stacey Keach as your narrator. Why does he keep playing with the lights? Thought I'd gone blind for a second. 
My apologies for the momentary darkness. Wartime regulations, you know. Think nothing of it. Perfectly understandable. Wasn't it a lovely meal? Yes, indeed. Glad you enjoyed it, ladies and gentlemen. Something more, perhaps? Uh, not for us, thank you, Stuart. Uh, we were just leaving. Come along, dear. Wait! Mommy, where's my doll? Why, here you are, little girl. You dropped it by your chair. <laughs> Can you thank the nice man? Thank you. You wouldn't want to leave your dolly behind now, would you? Come along, Joanna. It's well past your bedtime. Yes, Daddy. Who's this? Mr... Oh, I'm afraid I didn't get the gentleman's name. You are... Forgive me, I'm... I'm... Lancer. What's that? Aren't you Lancer? Oh, yes. I'm Jerry Potter. We looked for you at dinner. I was... detained. I... Saw your name on the purser's list. We were wondering where you were. You were. Will you join us? Oh, no, that's not necessary. There are three other tables... Three empty tables. I'm really not very hungry. Well, the captain wasn't able to join us tonight, so there's plenty of room. Come on over, I insist. Very well. Coffee, sir? Ah, yes. Thank you. I believe I would like some coffee. Here's your seat, Mr. Lancer. The more the merrier, I always say. The coiner of phrases. We could do with a bit of merriment. Let me help you, sir. I'll get the coffee. Wait, do I know you from somewhere? I don't think so, sir. But your face, I'm sure... It might well be. I I've travelled this line for a number of years. Perhaps it was on another ship before the war. Before the war. Seems like a long time ago, doesn't it, sir? Are you quite certain about the food? What? The cook can still prepare some. No, I, I don't have much of an appetite. Not even with all this salt air? Makes me hungry enough to eat a horse. Jerry! Would that be a seahorse, Mr. Potter? <laughs> <laughs> How about it, Lancer? Have some chow. Uh, not t t tonight. Something happened tonight? Nothing unpleasant, I trust. Why, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Mr. Lancer, are you ill? As a matter of fact... You do look pale. A bit of the old mal de mer, perhaps. You might do well to take the meal in your cabin. My cabin? Your quarters, Mr. Lancer. This is all rather disorienting, isn't it? But a good night's sleep can do wonders. I could prepare a tray, sir. No, no. I'd recommend a cup of hot broth at the very least. I'm fine, I tell you. It was just a temporary dizziness. You're all very kind. I shouldn't intrude. Nonsense. Then let me do the honors. This is my wife. Madame. Hello. And across the table are our dinner companions, Major Devereaux. How do you do? And his secretary, Miss Stanley. Are you going home, Mr. Lancer? Home. Or away from home? Why, I'm... Heading away from home. We are as well, I'm afraid. The Major is heading up a military mission in Washington. No, no, Barbara. Loose lips. Oh, sorry. I was just telling them that I took this trip once before, when my wife was alive. Spring of 38. How different it was. Mm, the Queen Mary, most elegant. Where do you suppose they dredged up this one? She looks to be 300 years old. The Queen of Glasgow. <laughs> Long live the Queen. Oh, hear, hear. What do you do, Lancer? Me. When I saw your name on the list, I tried to figure out what you'd look like. It's a game I play. Try to connect a face with a name. I thought you were probably an old language professor from Oxford or something. A regular barrel of laughs. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm... There goes the light again. Well, well. Good evening, Captain Willoughby. No, 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 no. Please, remain seated. I don't have much time. I thought I'd just stop for a cup of tea and say hello to those who are still here. Don't worry on our account. I'll get you tea, sir. Thank you, Steward. We did miss you, though, Captain. I must apologize. We have a miserable fog out there. No kidding. And I thought I'd best take my meal on the bridge. 
And the rest of the convoy, Captain, are they in sight? They'd have to be three feet off the bow to be in sight, Major. That fog is quite thick. Oh, dear. However, we do hope to have some sort of contact by tomorrow. But I wouldn't worry. She's a good stout ship, and this isn't her maiden voyage. She's made this passage often. I suppose misery loves company, though, doesn't it? I'd feel a lot safer if we were in a convoy. I can almost see those wolf packs converging on us. There would be no wolf pack converging on a single ship, Major Devereaux. Sorry? The principle of the submarine pack is based on the convoy attack. The gentleman is quite correct. Our primary danger would lie in a single submarine. Well, that's reassuring. I guess we stand a better chance against one than against 20, don't we? Just ask Admiral Potter here. He fought with Dewey at Manila. He knows everything. Still, it only takes one torpedo. They can do such dreadful damage. And I must tell you, I've had a miserably uncomfortable feeling ever since we've left. What kind of feeling? Of being followed. Isn't that something? I've had the same feeling. I'll tell you, I'd rather they go after us with a pocket battleship. That you can see, not a skulking, crummy tin fish a couple of miles underwater. If we're being followed, you will see the sub, Mr. Potter. It will surface. They won't waste all their torpedoes on us. Not when they can sit back a thousand yards and shell us with impunity and sink us at will. You, you, forgive me. This is Mr. Lancer, Captain. Mr. Lancer? But you sound like a U-boat commander. My apologies. That was clumsy of me. Oh, please, sit down. Let me clean it up, sir. I hope I didn't spill any coffee on you, Miss Stanley. No, but you did quite a job on yourself. That's quite all right. I'll get you a towel. I said it was all right. Yes, of course. Sit down, Mr. Lancer, please. Another cup of coffee, sir? No. Thank you. That won't be necessary. I think we might start by getting better acquainted. First of all, I trust everyone's comfortable. Oh, yes, quite. This ship, you know, wasn't designed to carry passengers. I hope you'll bear with some of the inconveniences. I suppose they're worth living with to get to the States, aren't they? You can say that again. Mr. Potter, I understand you're with the American government. War Production Board. And where is your home, Mrs. Potter? Good old Chicago. Windy City. Oh, how interesting. I do hope to travel farther west one day. I tell you, I'll be mighty glad to see it again, wind or no wind. And you, Mr. Lancer? Yes. Where's home for you? Home. I was born in... In Frankfurt. Frankfurt? Like in Germany? Yes, Germany. Well, how long had you been in England, Mr. Lancer? How long? Uh, not very long, not long at all. Uh, please accept my apologies. I think I'll go to my quarters now. Too bad. I was hoping we'd get a poker game going. whoop de doo Perhaps another time. Good night. Now, there goes an odd one, huh? I had him pegged as a German the minute he came in. Now, what do you suppose he's traveling on this ship for? You don't think he's a spy, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I rather doubt it, Mr. Potter. All the passengers are well screened. I am a bit concerned about him, however. He doesn't look at all well. Actually, I'm feeling a bit tired myself. I think I'll be off to bed. Good night, everyone. Sleep well. Watch your step, Barbara. I will. It's very dark out there. Would you like a torch? Oh, don't worry about me. I can have the steward escort you. I wouldn't think of it. See you all at breakfast. I'll get the light switch. Thank you, Captain. Good night. Hello? Is someone there?
I say, is it? <gasps> Who's there? Watch your step, Miss Stanley. Oh, Mr. Lancer. The stairs are quite slippery from the fog. So I see. I was afraid you'd lose your footing. Thank you for your help. The fog can be treacherous at sea. Mm. And it carries quite a chill, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, it does. It's best to stay off the deck at night. Why are you here, Mr. Lancer? What? I thought you'd be in your cabin. I'm still a bit unsettled. Not quite ready to sleep yet. Miss Stanley? Yes? May I ask a question? Please? Have we met before? I don't think so. Why? You'll forgive me, but you look so familiar. They all did, for that matter. Are you sure you're well, Mr. Lancer? Yes, yes, I, I seem to be. It's just this feeling. What sort of feeling? Oh, it will sound crazy to you. Go on, please. Just that I'm doing things, saying things. That you've done before. How do you know that? I know the feeling. I've had it occasionally. Have you? Walking into a room and being able to swear that you've been there before. Even the conversations. They seem identical to ones you've had at some other time. Yes, but what other time and where? And that's always the question, isn't it? And the people. Yes, and the people, too. Yes. That's extraordinary. What is? I don't recall... I, I don't seem to recall boarding this ship. Don't you? Or anything else, for that matter. How I got here, or why I'm here. There was a film about that. Pardon? In the cinema, a few years ago, with Leslie Howard. Oh, was it that American? What's his name? Garfield, John Garfield. I believe the title was Outward Bound, something like that. I don't have time to see many films. I don't either. But in this one, the people all found themselves on an ocean liner. Of course, it was a cruise ship, not a freighter. But none of them could remember anything. Hmm. There was a man and a woman, and they met and began talking, much as we are right now, I suppose. And it turned out they were... Go on. Well, they were all dead, you see, and on their way to the other side. Isn't that absolute rubbish? <laughs> it is indeed. You don't suppose we're dead, do you? And about to cross the River Styx or some such? Uh, no, no, that's ridiculous. I, for one, remember everything. A cab to the docks, and carrying my bags, and my passport, the security clearance. My passport. Of course. It must be in my cabin. If we were dead, I'm sure the meal would have been followed by a lovely dessert. Mr. Lancer, may I make a suggestion? Why don't you see the ship's doctor? I'm sure they must have one, even on a freighter. For what purpose? It has to be some form of, of temporary disorientation. I was standing on deck and it was as if I suddenly woke from a deep sleep. I heard your voices from the salon. Amnesia? Not really. I know who I am. I'm Karl Lanzer. I was born in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm in the... In the what? In the... You were going to tell me. You were in the something or other. Was I? I don't remember now. Mr. Lancer, perhaps if you got some sleep, that might be all it takes. It wouldn't help. I don't think I could get to sleep. I feel as if this were a nightmare. I feel strange. I feel as if there were a disaster waiting out there, some doom that's about to happen. 
As if we were being stalked. I know we are. It's stalking us. Yes, there's a sub out there, a U-boat. I know it. I know it's out there. I can't... I know. Who's there? Mr. Lancer? Yes, I'm Lancer. Would you come with me, please? Where? The captain's compliments, sir. He wonders if you could join him in his quarters. For what purpose? He'd like a few words with you. Go on, Mr. Lancer. I'll see myself to my cabin. Sir, this way. Mr. Lancer, sir. You wish to see me, Captain? Thank you for coming, Mr. Lancer. You've met my first officer, Mr. Danbury. Yes. What is this about? I wonder if you'd mind answering a few questions. No, not at all. First, would you mind showing us your passport? My passport? If you don't mind. Just routine, Mr. Lancer. On our passenger manifest, it seems that your passport number was somehow not included. Yes, of course. Oh, I, I'm afraid I don't have my wallet in my pocket. It must be down in my cabin. Well, that's perfectly all right. Sometime during the next few days, if you think of it, say tomorrow. You can show it to me whenever it's convenient. Are you feeling better, Mr. Lancer? Yes, much better. Is there anything I can get you? No, no. Then, is there anything you'd care to talk about? How do you mean? Anything on your mind. Something you'd care to tell us, perhaps? There's very little I can tell you. And why is that? Because I don't remember very much. No? Actually, to tell the truth, I don't know how I got here. I don't recall anything about it. Is that right? I seem to remember only a few odd, disjointed things. I know, for example, that my name is Carl Lancer. I know I was born in Frankfurt. So you said. Please continue. Continue where? That's it. At this moment, that's all I know. Mr. Lancer. Yes? At the table, you exhibited a rather unusual working knowledge of German submarines. Could that, perhaps, stir your memory? I wish it could, but it doesn't. I see. In that case, why don't you go on to bed for now? Have a good night's rest. We'll talk tomorrow, you and I. Very well. That will be all for now, Mr. Lancer. Good night. Good night. Most peculiar. I'd agree, sir. I'd say he bears watching. Then watching is what he'll get. I told you what he said at the table. What do you make of it? That's hard to say. But as I was going to get him on deck, he was talking to one of the passengers, Miss Stanley. And? He was speaking quite excitedly, in a very loud voice. I couldn't help but overhear. He was saying something about how he knew there was a U-boat out there. It's stalking us. That's what he said. You heard him say that? Those were his exact words. Thank you, Danbury. I thought you'd want to know, sir. Um, Danbury. Sir? Let's keep this between ourselves for the time being, shall we? Yes, sir. And see that a steward is sent down to his room. I want to have a look at that passport as soon as possible. Right away, sir. There you are, sir. All your clothing hung up, I believe that's it. Anything else I can help you with? No, that will be all. Ah, your shoes. Um, I'll just put them in the closet. Hold on, what's this? Where? In your bag. Looks like an officer's cap, but not one of ours. War souvenir. What are you talking about? This, sir. Uh, I was wondering if it was a war souvenir. Let me see that. Yes, sir. It's a naval officer's cap. Foreign by the style of it. Don't touch things that don't concern you. Uh, I only thought I'd put it away for you. That won't be necessary. I'll put it away myself. Yes, sir. That will be all. It 
is a German officer's hat. A submarine commander's. What does it say inside? It must have an identifying label. Yes, here. But this can't be. It says, Karl Lanzer, Kapitan, Kriegsmarine. Mr. Danbury. Yes, sir. We've slowed down again. See if you can impress upon that very temperamental engineer the rather dire necessity for speed. Engine room. Engine room. McLeod, can we get any more revs? We're losing speed badly. I can your pardon, sir, but I've got these blooming engines trained to the limit now. Kindly tell the captain that if I keep them going at this rate, they'll be a breakdown before morning. In that case, we'll be going a precious lot slower in a drift than under power. McLeod. We simply have no more revs. If you can give me maximum speed for another 12 hours... Captain! These engines needed to be overhauled a month ago, and instead of an overhaul, they're getting worked to death. Well, do what you can, man. Aye, aye, sir. What do you think, number one? Sir? Cheery predicament we have here. If we reduce speed and give those engines a break... We don't stand a chance. And if we keep them going at maximum, they'll break down inside of two hours. I don't know what to say, Captain. It's a dangerous call either way. If we could only see through this bloody fog. If they're out there, it won't make any difference. And they're out there, let me tell you. God knows they're out there, waiting like vultures. Another drink, please. Begging your pardon, sir, but it's very late. Don't beg my pardon. Just put the bottle on the bar. Go to bed if you're tired, but leave the bottle. That doesn't sound right. Sir? The bearings. Bearings, sir? Yes, on the engines. Uh, they always sound like that, sir. You get used to it. You should hear McLeod on the subject. He's the engineer. Says the engines on this tab were originally designed for Lord Nelson. Is that clock accurate? Why, yes, sir. She's a real antique, that one. Captain Willoughby had her on the old Harcourt Bay. Keeps perfect time, she does. It says five minutes past twelve at one fifteen. Not for a while yet. No, no, but at 1.15, something will happen at 1.15. Something, sir? What might that be? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know, except, except the hour and the minute, 1.15. It sticks in my mind. The tray for the bridge, please. Just being made up, sir. The cook will be done in a minute. Have a seat at the end of the bar. Been here long, has he? Sitting like that for three hours. One drink after another. Just sitting there, drinking. Wiping the sweat off his face and asking for more. And not getting drunk, mind you. That's three quarters of a bottle gone. I'd swear it was lemonade. I've never seen the like. Why have the engines stopped? Probably just routine maintenance, sir. Don't give me that. They've broken down. I don't think it's serious, sir. You don't think it's serious? A drift in waters like these without any power? You don't think that's serious? We're defenseless here. Now we are absolutely defenseless. They'll be repaired, Mr. Lancer. We'll be underway again soon. No. No, we won't be underway soon. We'll drift until... 1.15. That's what he's been saying all night long. You know, of course, how easy it would be for a submarine to... You're a nervous man, Mr. Lancer. I'd suggest you call it a night. Oh, 
I'm the nervous man. I can assure you that I am suffering from something a little more serious than nerves. I'm suffering from knowledge. I'm suffering from knowing what's going to happen. Really? No. My affliction comes from waiting and knowing, knowing that inside of an hour, a U-boat will surface off our bow with searchlights and a deck gun. We'll be attacked and we won't be able to run away. Here, sir. Sit down, man. How does it feel to you people just standing still and waiting, waiting for a shell or a torpedo to smash into you, waiting for the ship to blow apart so that you can find yourself in the water, closing in on you, filling your lungs so you can't scream? I said sit down, man. Mr. Lancer, this kind of talk won't do you or anyone else any good. Here's the captain's tray, sir. Leave it. Is something wrong? The gentleman is ill. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Carry on. Yes, sir. Go on, cook. Back to the kitchen with you. The U-boat's coming. We must get the engine started or abandon ship. That's what we must do. Yes, we must abandon ship. Do you hear me? Why has the clock stopped? Where did you go? Where have you all gone? Why have you left me alone like this? Where? Where is everyone? What is that? The searchlight. It's here. That's the U-boat. The U-boat is here. We've got to get out. Off the ship, everybody! There you are. You, all you, all you passengers, out of your rooms, listen to me. There's a U-boat. I just saw it. She's going to sink us. Can't you hear me? Why don't you move? Are you all out of your minds? What do I have to do? Do I have to grab you and carry you up on deck? Do I have to throw you bodily into the lifeboats? Do I have to knock you unconscious? They're gone. But where? Is the entire ship empty? Or have, have I gone mad? A life preserver, yes. SS Queen of Glasgow. Wait. I remember that name. Queen of Glasgow. Queen of Glasgow. Potter? Major Devereaux! Miss Stanley, where are you? Captain, steward, we must abandon ship. They are shelling us. We're hit, I tell you. Miss Stanley, we must get out. The lifeboat. I can, Mr. Lancer. The roof's collapsed. The door won't open. Climb through the porthole, quickly. I'll try. Where are the lifeboats? Over here, Mr. Devereaux. I'll have to climb down. Help us, please, my wife. I'm coming, Mr. Potter. Watch out. The rail is collapsing. The little girl. Where? The doll. Here, I, ha I have it. Who could do such a thing? Who? <laughs> Who? Yeah? Not much to show, Captain Lancer. That's all. Very little wreckage floated to the surface. Only this life preserver. There were no survivors. 
Then I'd say that's a good catch tonight, wouldn't you? Very good catch. It says SS Queen of Glasgow. Ah, a 5,000 tonner. Isn't that what the registry reads? Yes, sir. Cheer up, Lieutenant. Hand me the coffee. Well, pour it. If you wish, sir. You have nerves, Mueller. Not really, sir. A little shaky, perhaps. Oh, why? Nothing, sir. I asked you a question. Why? There were women and children on that ship. So? We gave them no warning. You'd have us give them warning, eh? So their radio man can send out their position, which quite incidentally is our position. <laughs> you have sentiment, but no brains. You're an old woman, Mueller. You know that? I just find it difficult. To do what? To reconcile killing those people. Without warning. It makes me... It makes me wonder if we're not damned now. In the eyes of the British Admiralty, we most certainly are. I mean in the eyes of God. You're not just a fool, Lieutenant. You're also a religious fool. Perhaps a mystic, too. And if we are damned, what will happen? I've had dreams about it. Maybe... Maybe people like us have a special kind of hell waiting. Maybe to be damned is to have a fate like the people on that ship. To have to suffer as they suffered, and die as they died. You are a mystic, Lieutenant. We'd ride the ghost of that ship every night for eternity. Every night, Herr Kapitan. For eternity. What are you talking about? They could die only once. Just once. But we can die a hundred million times. Every night. Ride the ghost of that ship. Every night. Every night. What? What is this place? The time. It must be late. Very late. Light in the salon! Let's black out down there! Who? Forgive me, sir. Yes? Are you addressing me? Uh, begging your pardon, but they'll be finished serving dinner soon. They? The galley crew, sir. Why do you tell me this? I only meant... What? What did you mean? All I mean to say is, you'd best go in now, sir, if you want your evening meal. My... my meal? The salon will be closing in a few more minutes. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. In the salon. Is that what you call it? Yes, sir. It's very dark out here. Would you like to follow me? Follow? The lights, you see. From now on, I'll have to switch them off when we open the door. Uh, to the deck and then on again. You understand, sir? Because of the blackout. The blackout? Yes. This way, sir. A are you all right? Why wouldn't I be? Is something wrong with my appearance? Why... No, sir, it's only that... Is this your first time? My what? Your first passage. It can take a bit of getting used to sea legs and all that. I'm quite used to being at sea. Thank you. I was just... A special kind of hell waiting. Maybe to be damned is to have a fate like the people on that ship. To have to suffer as they suffered and die as they died. We'd ride the ghost of that ship every night for eternity. For eternity. For eternity. For eternity. Yes, sir? Just listening. To the engines? No, no, not the engines. I was listening 
to the water. The cold ocean water out there. And the night. You've heard talk about paying the fiddler, the comeuppance awaiting every man when the ledger of his life is opened and examined. The credits and debits added up, a tally made, and then the reward or the penalty paid. In the case of Carl Lancer, former Capitan and U-boat commander, Navy of the Third Reich, this is the penalty. This is the justice meted out. This is judgment night in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, You'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. Judgment Night, starring Chelsea Ross with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Nick Sands, Damian Arnold, Richard Shafson, James Houghton, Sarah Wellington, Christian Stolte, Frenette Lebo, Doug James, Martin Astrope, Anna Rose Benson, and David Darlow. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, Exim Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. Audio editing, sound design, Foley effects, and mix for the Twilight Zone radio dramas are by Cerny American creatives Craig Lee, Michael Slaybach, Bob Benson, and Jason Rizzo. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. <laughs>